Welcome to the 13th commencement ceremony at Ashesi. Class of 2017, congratulations on reaching this important milestone in your lives. <laughs> this year, on 4th March 2017, we marked Ashesi's 15th anniversary. We marked it quietly, actually. This year, we also lost a dear friend, Professor Nanara Abba Apt, who served as founding academic dean of our institution. I would like us all to acknowledge her with a moment of silence. Class of 2017, let us also take a moment with a loud applause this time to thank all those whose contributions have helped bring you to this day. Take a moment to visualize all those who crossed your mind as you applauded, their faces, their names, the roles they played in getting you here. Who was on your list? My list included people you would expect, your families who nurtured and supported you to this stage in your life's journey, the faculty who guided you through your studies here, the administrators who invited you to join our community, who counseled you through difficulty, who advised you on career choices, who raised funding for this institution and for your scholarships, who worked relentlessly to create and maintain this nurturing environment we call a chassis. But my list also included people you probably didn't include in yours. Well, maybe you did. But my list, you see, spans 17 years, two years of preparation, 15 years since we started classes at Ashesi University College. So my list includes my family. Odefo Oteng Kranchi II, whose foresight and warm embrace made possible our campus here in Brekusu. And the elders and youth leaders of Brekusu who supported the Oteng Kranchi's decision. My list includes teachers and professors at Chapel Hill School, Association School, at Chimota School, Swarthmore College, UC Berkeley, who educated me. My list included my colleagues at Microsoft, the philanthropists and foundations who supported Ashesi's mission, members of our board of trustees, board of directors, past and present. My list includes the architects, the engineers who built this place, former professors and administrators of Ashesi who helped launch this institution. And my list includes alumni whose accomplishments and character have driven the reputation of their alma mater and yours. If we added all our lists together, we would probably still not fully capture just how much effort has gone into making this day possible for you, class of 2017. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to all those who have made this day possible. We come here today as an expression of our connectedness. We come here today to celebrate your accomplishments. We come here today as an expression of our belief in your promise as a force for good in the world. This morning, I would like to invite you to join me in a conversation that I began with the Mandela Washington Fellows last month about what we all need to do to become leaders who will serve collectively for the good of Africa and the world. As you know, the Mandela Washington Fellowship has a very similar mission to ours, which is to nurture leaders in Africa. And I began that conversation by sharing some lessons from outside the classroom, from my practice of Shotokan Karate, which I began in college. 28 years ago, I began this practice. It was one year break as we tried to ship the Windows NT system, operating system at Microsoft. There was a one year break after I failed my first black belt exam. 
those one year break when we tried to launch a chassis. So 25 years of actual training. And I've kept it up because I love the physicality of it. The economy of movement as we try to sharpen our skills. I love pushing myself. But that's not what I want to talk with you about this morning. I want to talk to you about the lessons from our dojo kun, which is this affirmation that we say after every class, after an hour and a half, two hours of intense training. We say these words, seek perfection of character, be faithful, endeavor, respect others, refrain from violent behavior. Seek perfection of character. Why character and not skill in a martial arts practice? And why not achieve perfection of character? Why just seek? Well, first of all, the right character leads to the right skill. And second, perfection is hard to achieve. In fact, it is impossible to achieve. If our dojo kun asked us to achieve perfection of character, it would be asking us to fail. Because perfection is impossible. And so we seek. It is striving for something. And let us consider, part of the difficulty of seeking perfection is even defining what perfection is. So consider some of the classic values that lead to to character that we all understand. Optimism, humility, patience, honesty, and so on. What is perfect humility? Might it not result in meekness? And is that useful for a martial art practice or for leadership? What is perfect patience? There's some things that we should be patient about we should be extraordinarily patient about. But there are other things that we must not be patient about. So even to decide what perfection means is a bit of a quandary. And we could say similarly for many of these other values of courage and so on. So the key is to search, to seek, to never stop. Be faithful. Be loyal to a cause and to others. In the martial arts, perhaps we could consider it as loyalty to the way of the warrior. Protect the truth. Protect justice. But it is more than that. It is also loyalty to society, to others. Do we recognize that a relationship exists between ourselves and others? This is the question. Do we understand the nature of those relationships? And do we value them? When we answer those questions, then we have a measure of how loyal we are. You will need to ask yourself these questions about your professional and personal relationships, and also your relationship with society as a whole. To be loyal to a friend, to a spouse, to be faithful to a child. To be loyal to a child is no small matter. And of course, to be loyal to yourself. Endeavor, it's just one word, and yet with such profound meaning. To endeavor means to show up, just come to class. I remember my sensei when he would demonstrate an advanced technique and see us hesitate, and he would just say, just try. And we would just try. This word, endeavor, is about making an effort. It is also about fortitude and courage and grit. 
When I was about to graduate, actually thankfully, by the time I was sitting where you are sitting now, I, I had a job. But that last semester at Swarthmore, I had applied to, I think it was about eight graduate schools. My plan was to graduate from college with a bachelor's degree, with two bachelor's degrees, but to go on to graduate school and become a master of something, to become a master of engineering. And so I applied to eight schools and I got into them, but none of them offered me money. None of them offered scholarships. And for me at the time, an admission without a scholarship was just, is just as good as rejecting me, right? I mean, they might as well have written and said, we're not admitting you. Um, so my first plan is not actually what I ended up doing. My backup was to apply for a job. So I applied to a bunch of companies. And I tell you, by the time I got the job offer from Microsoft, I had $200 in my bank account. And up until that time, I didn't, I didn't even have money enough money to buy a plane ticket to return home to Ghana. And so the, you know, the way to get home, but maybe to get deported, right? <laughs> but I got this job at Microsoft um, because I endeavored, because I tried. And I said, okay, I'll go, go get a job, I'll work, make some money, and then go to grad school and become master of something. But Microsoft, it turns out, was the perfect pathway for me to get to a chassis. My colleagues from there and the network that I built there have been instrumental to my current effort. And so the hurdle that stood before me in that final year was a hurdle that actually led me to a different path that was in fact a good path. Now, I'll admit to you that in my senior year, last semester of senior year, in a moment of weakness, I blamed Swarthmore. I, actually, to be more precise, I blamed the faculty who were so stingy with those A's, <laughs> right? And I thought, if these guys would just have given me more A's, maybe I would have got the scholarships to go to grad school. Um, so this is a move, moment of weakness. Um, But let me tell you, every step of the way requires endeavor. You have to try. When I hesitated about leaving Microsoft to set off on this journey to start a chassis, I eventually decided, just try. Um, just like my sensei had told us all those years. Respect others. Be polite. Do not underestimate others. Do not underestimate your opponent. Do not hold others in contempt, especially those with whom you disagree. Because when you, when you treat others with disrespect or contempt, you close the door to friendship. So respect others. And finally, refrain from violent behavior. In a martial art, the last words we say after every class, every training, every practice, is to refrain from violent behavior. Really? Yes. What is violence anyway? Pope Francis once called corruption one of the most brutal forms of violence in the world because it suppresses societies and keeps people in poverty. Violence starts with your thoughts. And from your thoughts, your words, from your words, your actions, your habits, your character, your destiny. To refrain from violence means to moderate your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Everything else depends on these. So class of 2017, we have great hope for the future and your role in it. Seek perfection of character. Be faithful, endeavor, respect others, 
refrain from violent behavior. I leave you with these thoughts to ponder on your commencement day, and I wish you Godspeed in the days and years ahead. Congratulations.